Well, we had a two-week hiatus because I decided to uh, bugger off down to the South Island. Uh, but we're back with the, another revamped or a new revamped Hot Air Sports podcast with me, Macca, and me good mate, Mahona. How are you, mate? Oh, I've been working for, the, for, for, the, for, for us, mate. I've been working for the country. You know, some of us have to. Some of us have to keep going, keep working, keep the country sort of productive. And that's what I've been doing, mate. I've been hard at work while you've been swanning around <laughs> being a tourist in our own country. So, quite right, quite right. Yeah. Well, you were supposed to too, but uh, obviously work <laughs> comes first. And of course, since we spoke uh, last, you've turned 50, mate. I have. I have, mate. The big 5-0. I'm officially a member of the old man's club and uh, <laughs> I'm quite liking it, to be fair. Quite liking it. Oh, you so don't look a day over 49. Oh, cheers, mate. Once again, you're, you're, you're full of beautiful compliments. That's the reason you're one of my best friends. <laughs> no, 50, it's a, it's a strange thing, isn't it, mate? Because, you know, you look back and you sort of think... 2000, gee, that wasn't that long ago. And then you think, shit, it was 20 years ago, you know, and in 20 years, I'm going to be 70. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and then it's just the, the uh, breadth of, um, especially when you and I, we've been watching sport all our lives and we sort of think back to times past. That's the weirdest thing for me. And I, whenever I think of 1995, I always think of my beloved Warriors. That's the year they came in the comp. I think it's not that long ago. Before you oh. know, I blink of it, like 25 years ago and we still haven't won a comp, mate. But there you go. Yeah. Yeah, old man. Oh, well. Old man. <laughs> so two old men talking podcasts with this new two-way technology. It's fangled, right, right. it's new, but we've, we've got the hang of it. And this is a revamped uh, Hot Air Sports podcast. We've tried to compress everything into one nice, neat little package. Um, Macca will tell me what he's been watching over the, over the past week. I'll tell you what I've been watching. And then we're going to do two-minute hits on a bunch of great sporting topics that we've, uh, we've picked out. So Macca, without further ado... What have you been watching over the past uh, couple of weeks? Well, a bit of rugby, a bit of football, a bit of baseball. They're probably the main three sports that I've uh, I've been watching. Of course, saw, watched the mighty Liverpool yesterday um, cruise to a nice 2-0 victory over uh, Chelsea, who, you know, are talking themselves up this year, having spent large in the transfer market. And we might talk a wee bit more about that a little later on. Uh, but Liverpool, of course, um, have come out of the blocks just as they finished last season, really. Uh, yes, they conceded three goals against Leeds last week, but to keep a clean sheet against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge is uh, a mighty fine effort. And, of course, Alisson saving a penalty in the second half uh, to Jorginho, who uh, hasn't missed a penalty since he came to the Premier League and has that uh, Bruno Fernandes style of taking penalties where he runs up to the ball, does a bit of a jump, and uh, that usually sends the keeper diving, so he just pops it in the other side. But Allison, uh, big brave man that he is, he stood uh, stood up the whole way through, even after the little jump. Waited till he kicked it and uh, chose correctly to go to his left and push the ball away. But probably a decision I didn't really think was a penalty to begin with. Um, New, Ze- uh, New Zealand, Liverpool's new signing Thiago, uh, who had a magnificent game. Uh, gave away the penalty. He didn't really, uh, there was no intention to bring down uh, Timo Werner. Um, But yeah, they just sort of crossed paths and and Werner went down as most forwards do. Um, But there was, yeah, no, as I mentioned, no uh, pain to Liverpool with uh, Alisson saving it. And uh, yeah, just going back to Thiago, I thought he was absolutely unbelievable, having not even... uh, uh, taken part in much of a training session before playing. <laughs> he just went out there. No instructions, according to Jurgen Klopp. Just told to go out there and do what he does. And, and he did. 75 passes in 45 minutes. It's not a bad effort. Unbelievable, Unbelievable mate. What a player. Um, we, we were talking about him, weren't we, uh, a week or two back on our last podcast and probably the podcast before that and the podcast before that because obviously he's been linked with Liverpool for quite a while and I was dead keen to get him. He looked amazing for Bayern Munich in that run-up to the Champions League final and he just showed so much in 45 minutes what he can offer us from midfield. I know it was 10 on 11. Uh, the Christensen took down Mane and uh, well, rugby tackled him and it was a definite red card. But after that, I mean... I- I mean, look, let's be honest. The guy can just pick a pass better than anyone we've ever had since probably Xabi Alonso. He's, he's just an yeah. absolutely phenomenal player. 
and he is just going to offer us so much in that midfield area. We've got a lot of players in there, but they all offer different things, and Thiago offers something that we don't. So, yeah, 200-something 200, 200 million for Fat Frank, and uh, it's got him nowhere. Got him nowhere. Uh, back yeah, to I'll, you know, what... I'll, I'll give them um, their dues. I, I didn't think they played that badly. Um, those new players, it is going to take time for them to all yep. gel into a team. Um, I mean, the the young boy, Kai Havertz, it's going to take him time to settle into yeah. playing, you know, a different style of football. He's already played in two different positions in the first two games. I think you'll probably find he'll play just about every position in the midfield and up front um, before he actually settles on, before Lampard actually settles on a position for him. Uh, Leverkusen, he played more in a number 10 role. But if mm. you're playing a 4-3-3, you don't really have a number 10 as such. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, what Fat Frank does with that uh, lineup once you know the season gets into the uh, into the middle. Maybe they should try uh, playing their keeper in another position, mate, because he's absolutely shocking. He he's absolutely mud. Uh, I th- I can't understand why Frank didn't start with Caballero in the beginning of the season. He's made two mistakes so far in two games, leaving the goals. Uh, I think he's gone. I think there's Mendy. Uh, is it the Cameroon or is he French or Cameroonian Mendy, anyway? Please. Big. Yeah, uh, he's uh, Senegalese. Uh, six foot six, giant of a keeper. He's coming in from France. They're going to spend a few, 50 million more. It's like, how much money does Abramovich have? Like, like Klopp said yeah, with a little dig. You know, we're, we're not fi- financed by an oligarch. And uh, that got uh, yeah. Frank's heckles up, didn't it? Um, yeah, certainly. Yeah, but, after but, the game, um, he was, of course, asked about the goalkeeping situation. Yeah. And um, the... Uh, Interviewer, I think it was Jeff Shreves from Sky Sports, asked him, uh, well, you know, we've heard the rumour that uh, Edouard Mendy is on his way from Wren, um, and will you be sticking with Kepa? Uh, what's going to be happening with your goalkeeping situation? And Frank just replied, I'm not commenting on that. I know, which basically <laughs> means he's gone. Yeah. The problem is, though, they spent so much money on him. He's the world world's highest uh, transfer fee for a goalkeeper mm. and they're not going to recoup any of that back are they so mm. it's a little bit tricky no he cool. just he, he looks like a deer in the headlights doesn't he he, does, eh? he um, does that second goal was just a shocker and it goes all the way back to the season before last remember when he refused to come off the field to be yep. substituted by Caballero in the league cup uh, if- FA Cup, League Cup, one of those, yeah, League one Cup, of those ones. I think it was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, League Cup. And yep. he, he refused to come off the field. And ever since then, he's uh, he's not really um, been giving them much protection back there as a, as a number one and was even dropped towards the end of last season for Caballero. So, uh, yes, interesting to see what happens. Uh, and the goal against Brighton last week, even though they won 3 1, was his fault mm. as well. So, I but, know. Yes. Oh, well. You know, Chelsea have got a bit of a uh, Loris Carrius, Simon Mignolet uh, situation. They have. And, and, they uh, have. They have. Yeah. It, couldn't hap- it couldn't happen to a nicer team. Uh, uh, other than Man United, uh, I did see uh, a result for them. What, what, what happened to them in the weekend? Uh, mm. Oh, yeah. oh, they, they lost Man- to Crystal Palace. Man- Man- have, uh, have you know that uh, Donny van der Beek scored on his Ooh. debut for Manchester United? Um, yes. And that was really the only interesting thing that happened in that game. Apparently he's better than Thiago. Apparently, Apparently. Danny, Danny ben- yeah. Um, I, I saw. You see that James Milner tweet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> James Milner said that going off, going off the field at uh, at Stamford Bridge, he bumped into Frank Lampard and said, "Oh, gee, Frank, uh, you for, for the price you spent on habits, you could you could afford two and a half or three Tiagos, couldn't you?" Two point six. Two point six was it? <laughs> he said not now. Not now, yeah. <laughs> uh, The other game I did watch over the weekend was uh, Leeds United. Um, yep. We were involved in another seven-goal thriller. Another 4-3. Uh, Fulham. Um, to be honest, Leeds definitely bossed that game. Um, fully deserved their 4-1 lead, but Fulham showed a bit of guts to come back, scored those two goals in the second half um, to bring it back to 4-3. But really, to be perfectly honest, Leeds looked in total control in that uh, in that game, and I think they'll uh, they could end up in the in the top half of the uh, Premier League this season. I really think so. They've got some very good players in their side. Uh, that um, Matthews Klitsch in the middle of the park, yeah, yeah, uh, yep, plays Klitsch. just behind the striker. I thought he was outstanding this week, and he was also played really well against Liverpool the previous mm. week as well. And I really do like Jack Harrison on the uh, 
who played on the left wing for them um, as, a, as a quality player and scored that great goal with his right foot um, against Liverpool. So, yeah, I think uh, Leeds are in for a promising season. Um, They're bloody entertaining anyway. Oh, <laughs> seven, seven goals, goals seven per goals game. In, uh, two games. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, mate. Great to, great to watch. You can't, you can't uh, not be turned on by that, that's for sure. Um, the other thing, picking up from the football over the weekend, good to see Chris Wood getting amongst the goals again. Yeah. Only took him nine minutes into the uh, into the Burnley-Leicester game to score. Unfortunately, Burnley couldn't uh, keep hold of that lead and got beaten by Leicester. But yeah, Chris Wood back and yeah. firing in the goals again. So, that was a clinical finish too, mate. Just one touch, bang. Beautiful, well. beautiful. After the yeah. VAR had a good look at it for a possible handball. Yep. Uh, uh, nowhere near his Let, arm. Let's not get into VAR right now, mate. Okay, and uh, what else have you been watching? Bit of EPL, obviously, same as me. What else? Yep, uh, American sport. Rugby over the weekend, the Mitre 10 oh, yep. has been very interesting. Um, sad to see my beloved Canterbury lose the Ranfurly oh, Shield. Oh, I was the, wondering when you'd mention the it. Weekend with the Barrett brothers um, guiding Taranaki to that win. Good old Taranaki. I don't, uh, I don't mind seeing it out in the provinces, even though I would love to see it locked away at Rugby Park in uh, Christchurch. Uh, I'd love to see it at North Harbour Stadium again, mate, because uh, no one no one can get across the bridge. So uh, it'll be safe there forever. It certainly will. <laughs> uh, good result for Wellington too, uh, upsetting yeah. Auckland. Um, that was a big result. And uh, mm. Wellington really got out of the blocks quickly, scored four, four tries in the first half. And um, Caleb Clark tried his best to get Auckland back into the game, but uh, it wasn't to be. And Wellington held on for a, a very good win in that game. Um, and Tasman just seem to be rolling on. I think they're hot favourites to win the uh, the Mitre 10 Cup. Um, they're just full of players uh, that can play at the top level. A few All Blacks in the side, but uh, I think once the All Blacks all go, um, mm. Tasman is still going to be a quality side, and uh, they looking good to win uh, back-to-back Mitre 10 Cups. It's crazy, mate, isn't it? When you when you think, like, 10 years ago, if you had told me Tasman rebranded Marlborough, really, right? Marlborough. Top Nelson of the Marlborough, yeah. of Nelson Marlborough, top of uh, the heap of provincial rugby in this country. Yeah, is, you, if you had have told me that ten million years ago, you know, I just would not would not have believed you. Um, did they merge to become Tasman? Yes, yeah, Nelson. They and did. Nelson so, Marlborough. I mean, if if that's not an endorsement of uh, of the merge situation, then nothing is really, is it? I mean, it's a long way from the uh, from the Central Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> Man of two and Hawks Bay. That uh, that partnership was always doomed to fail, given yeah. the uh, the rivalry between the two provinces being right next door to each other. And yes, Nelson Bays and Marlborough did have a, a bit of a rivalry, but it certainly wasn't as strong as the uh, Man of two Hawks Bay rivalry. So yeah, a good move. Um, I think both unions realised that if they wanted to see top class rugby being held in the region, that they had to merge. Mm. And um, you'd have to say it's been a very successful merger. Crazy, mate. Number one number one in the country. Uh, so what else? Let's move to America, shall we? Tell me what's yeah. going on in American sports, mate. I've been missing the baseball. I saw, I did turn it on the other day, and uh, the Yankees were down four to, four to, four to zero to, uh, to the Red Sox, but I didn't catch the end of that game. How did, they, how, did they, how did that finish? Yes, the mighty New York Yankees came back, of course, and won that game oh. six runs to five in extra innings. they did. And uh, just yesterday have actually qualified for the the postseason now. And there's actually Already? two teams. Yeah, well, the, there's only a week to go in the regular season. Uh, Not so. That's what happens when you have a six-week regular season. Um, yeah. But already clinched to Tampa Bay, Chicago White Sox, Oakland, Minnesota, New York, and the American League. Um, the cheating Houston Astros still haven't qualified yet. Um, but they're sitting in uh, second place in the West, so they should get through. In the National League, there's only the Dodgers and the San Diego Padres that have qualified so far. So pretty even going in the National League, um, which it usually is, especially in the Central. Um, there is five games separating the top three. And uh, sorry, that's the American League. In the uh, National League, four and a half games are separating the four teams in the Central Division uh, with Chicago, Cubs, St. Louis, Cincinnati, and Milwaukee, all within uh, four and a half games of each other. So uh, that uh, division's going to go right down to the wire. And in the East, the National League East, Atlanta, Miami, Philadelphia uh, are only separated by four games as well. So uh, 
those races going right down to the wire. And this, uh, yes, one week to go of the regular season before the uh, the new wild card season kicks off, which uh, features eight teams from each um, each league. So it will be uh, interesting to see what happens there. So at the and moment... How, many, how long are those, season, how long are those uh, series, the wild card series? best of three, and all three games will be played at the home of the team with the best record. So at the moment, uh, going by the current standings, Tampa Bay will host, host Toronto. Chicago White Sox will host Cleveland. Oakland Athletics will host the cheating Houston Astros. And <laughs> Minnesota, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Minnesota Twins will host the Yankees at this stage. And yeah, the Eagle uh, Yankees. National League, Dodgers hosting the Reds. Cubs hosting the Phillies. Braves hosting the Cardinals and the Padres hosting the Marlins, who uh, look like they could qualify, which would be uh, quite a shock in that uh, National League East. So going right down to the wire in the National League and uh, still a few places to be finalised in the American League. So uh, uh, the big thing, though, this year is with the... um, with the postseason uh, moving up to 16 teams, they'll get rid of eight, obviously, after this first round. And then from then on, the divisional series, the championship series, and then the World Series are all going to be played on neutral venues. Um, okay. Spread through San Diego, Los Angeles, uh, Texas, home of the Texas Rangers, yeah. uh, Houston, and, uh, yeah, those four teams will each host. So, so they... So all the games in that series will be hosted at one ground. Is that right? Correct. Yep. So what about the World Series? Where's that going to be held? Have they have they already decided this? That? Yes, that's going to be held at the brand new Globe Life Field in Arlington. Uh, oh, okay, Kansas, Texas. In Texas. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, oh, that, so yeah, that's, it's, um, I think they're doing it. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, it, obviously. Sure why, why they've sorry. done it, I think it's to just reduce the travelling. and. Yeah. You know the obviously the COVID threat. So yep. uh, yeah, two well, series in Texas and uh, two in California. I wonder whether ongoing. I mean, I know the home and away thing. I mean, once you get crowds back, probably you know it'll probably it'll go back to you know the status yeah. quo. I'm sure, but um, we don't know how long this COVID thing is going to be going on for. And when you look at you know the American football, every game is uh, you know at the home ground. But when they when it comes to that showpiece event. Mm. Uh, they take it somewhere, and it's often a big boon for that town, isn't it? So I wonder whether yeah. they would think about ever sort of instead of the home and away at the uh, for the World Series, take it to another town each each year. That could be amazing. Yeah, I don't think that'll ever happen. I don't think that'll uh, ever happen. It's only this year. It's a bit like yeah. them doing the Champions League, you know, all in Portugal. Um, yeah, basically reducing the travel and infection risk. Um, but yeah. I mean, going back to your point about the Champions League, having the, the home and away, um, I mean, we've only uh, seen last year in the Washington versus... Uh, um, who did they beat last year? Um, Houston. Yes, and, um, the cheating. Every team... <laughs> yeah, the cheating Houston. <laughs> every every team, the, every away team won the game. Uh, yeah. So four, three resulted to yeah. the match. But... Um, the Nationals won all four games in Houston. That's right. Houston won the three games in Washington. So, uh, and that was the first time ever. Uh, but normally, you, um, you get the home field advantage, and and it's a run or two times out of ten, really? the team with yeah. home advantage wins. Um, That's right. So, yeah, I don't think they'll ever take away that uh, once we get back to whatever our new normal is going to be. What, well, yeah, when you say next year we'll be back to normal, I bloody hope so, mate. <laughs> uh, so did you watch any of the NFL? Uh, no, I just uh, I had a look. I've missed out on a bit of it. Yeah, good to see the uh, 49ers back in the they winners' circle. Yep. Um, I don't know if they're going to go quite as well as they did last year. I think they surprised a lot of teams last year in making the Super Bowl mm-hmm. and then stuffed themselves up on the day by celebrating a bit too early. And, of course, mm. Kansas City came back and won that. But, um, yeah. Um, first, I did notice. Yep. First home game for the LA Raiders on... Um, oh, sorry. The Las Vegas Raiders. Las Vegas Raiders, the yeah. Allegiant Stadium is on um, what we would call Tuesday afternoon football, Monday night yep. football in the States. Um, so, yeah, they are playing the New Orleans Saints. 
in a uh, hundred thousand seat stadium with no one in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing right. stadiums with no one in them. They're just it's just so sad. Yeah, so I sad. think one of the one of the big games that uh, happened yesterday was the uh, Patriots going down mm-hmm. to the Seahawks, thirty five to thirty, the clash of two all star uh, quarterbacks with Russell Wilson and uh, the Patriots' new quarterback Cam Newton. Um, mm. 35 to 30, a big game in Seattle. So, uh, good win for the Seahawks. And, and how uh, did Tom Brady get on yesterday? Do you know? Because I know uh, he lost his fir- Tom Brady. He, I know he lost his first game. Uh, uh, is, yeah, they had a 31 17 win over the Panthers. Okay, so he's one and one. He's one and one along with Belichick. So, there you go. I'm just keeping an eye on how both of those two are going because right, right, I, right, right. I don't know whether there's a bit of bad blood there or whether it's a Cam Smith sort of. Uh, uh, who's the coach of the uh, Craig Bellamy situation? I don't know whether you saw that in the NRL in the weekend yes. when <laughs> gave him the bird. <laughs> yes, and, uh, course, and, and last the only other game of note really was uh, last year's Super Bowl winners, the Kansas City Chiefs, getting up over the Chargers in a close one, uh, twenty-three yeah. to twenty. So um, yeah, good to see the NFL back again. And um, as I say, I. Don't know if the 49ers will do as well as they did last year, but fingers crossed they can uh, pull another one out of the bag and go that uh, one step further. So that just remains to be seen. Brilliant. Okay. Um, you watch anything else or you want me to take over? I know that's about it from me um, for the sport that I watch. So what did you uh, settle yourself in front of the... Uh... Well, mate, you know I'm an NRL fan. You should know that by now. And... Uh, the Warriors lost their third game on the trot, mate. Uh, 26-14 to the Raiders. Uh the game turned with about five minutes to before half time. We were playing with 13. They were playing with 12 due to them cheating, which is what happens. Uh, everyone cheats against us, uh, as Jazz Devunga said during the week. You know, it's always 13 on 14. But this time, we had 13. They had 12. We were leading 14-6, hot on attack. And a Raiders intercept try to another speedy Fijian, whose second name I can't uh, pronounce, but his first name's called Semi, uh, which... <laughs> They're all called semi, aren't they? We were hot on attack. It would have been 26. It was a 12-point turnaround. It was 14-12 at halftime. And the Raiders went on with it in the second half, looking every bit the top four side. Uh, At least this time, the Warriors were beaten by a team on the field instead of a bunch of useless officials. Uh, The previous two weeks, just some absolutely... Honestly, I mean... I just Not that you're bitter, of course. No, I'm not bitter. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say if a team beats us fair and square, but we were beaten by the bunker and the officials. This time, no. The, the, look, the Raiders were way too good. Uh, but as if, if to make a point of it, the last five minutes of the game, there were two bunker decisions that were both challenged by both teams and just absolutely Barry Crockers of a decision by the, um, by, the, by the bunker. Just blow up the bloody bunker. That's what the, 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 the commentators were even on our sides. They were just going, what have they seen? It's like two guys going for the ball in midair. One guy catches it. The other guy falls down. The other guy falls to the ground. He says the Warriors guy tackles him in the air. It's almost like, you know, uh, high tackle by the opposition, penalty to them. It's, that's just the way it goes. So, and also the very sad side, of course, of Roger Tuivasa Shek uh, pulling a hamstring. The man is an absolute saint. He's just done so much great work for for rugby league and the NRL uh, in the last four months. He's been away from his kids for four and four and a bit months. Um, I just say bring him home. I say charter a flight for him now and get him home. He's got 14 days quarantine to sort of deal with as well. Yep. Um, but apparently they can't because of the flights and everything. So he will be there on the sideline for that last match. Uh, Roger, I love you, mate. Uh, with one round to go, the Panthers have won the minor premiership. They are just absolutely on fire. They just don't look like they can be beaten. Uh, the eight is locked in, and there's a battle on for the wooden spoon between the Bulldogs and the Broncos. The Broncos are now stone motherless last, which doesn't make me too sad. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll cover the playoffs uh, in next week's pod. But yeah, the, the Warriors have done me proud this year. I'm, I'm quite happy. Uh, with how they've performed, uh, all things considered. Watching a little bit of the NBA as well. Uh, the Celtics finally getting a win yesterday uh, against the Heat, 117-106. Uh, they trail 2-1 in the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, the Lakers lead the Nuggets 2-1 in the other series. LeBron James, ever since uh, he found out he's not the MVP, he's taken it personally. And, uh, yeah, he's just playing out of his skin. 2-0 against, uh, 2-0 against the Nuggets. I'm looking forward to a uh, throwback series. Lakers Celtics. Wouldn't that be awesome for a 2020 well, really final for the NBA? I'd love to see that. 
and uh, also watching a bit of the uh, ice hockey, the NHL. We're into the Stanley Cup time. Uh, Dallas Stars are taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning in the NHL Stanley Cup finals after the Tampa Bay uh, Lightning beat the Islanders 4-2. And the Stars uh, beat the Vegas Golden Knights, probably the dumbest name of any sporting franchise ever. Uh, <laughs> the Las Vegas Golden Knights, uh, 4-1. They beat them. Uh, the Stars... Uh, one game, one four, one with Dallas goalkeeper Anton Kubidin, the standout performer. He stopped all 22 third period shots and 35 shots in total. And they lead uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning 1 0 in the Stanley Cup finals. I think game two is on uh, today at some stage. So there you go. That's what I've been watching, mate. I've watched a bit of other things as well. But uh, of course, I watched all the EPL, but we covered that as well. So that's what I've been watching in the last uh, few weeks. So now. This is when our uh, our yeah. Well, actually, our, before we get into the yeah, uh, on, the new Rasmus, there was a, a, another sport I did actually watch over the weekend, and that was of course Scotty McLaughlin and the Mighty Supercars. Oh yeah, I saw across it. Across the he had another good weekend. Not so good on the uh, Saturday race. Um, got bumped with a fifteen or fifteen second penalty after he uh, drove uh, fellow Kiwi Andre Heimgartner off the road. Um, yeah. But that's by the by. And, uh, yeah, picked up a third and a win on Sunday. So extending his lead in the Supercars Championship over Jamie Wincup. The interesting note about the first race on Sunday, race two of the three over the weekend, Kiwis finishing one, two, three, four in the wow. uh, in the race with Shane Van Gisbergen taking out the win, followed by Heimgartner, Scotty McLaughlin, and uh, Fabian Coulthard in fourth. So uh, the Aussie commentators weren't overly happy about that, but they were calling out to their old mate Greg Murphy, saying that Murph would be running around his lounge in Havelock North, really, <laughs> really loving that. And well, they're, not, they're, claiming, they're about... not claiming Murphy. <laughs> I thought yeah. they'd claim him as, as an Aussie. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and just uh, just before we go into our uh, our new Razzmatazz uh, style... <laughs> Hot new format. I've just got a few franchise names that would challenge... Oh, the, go on. Uh, the um, Las, Las Vegas, Vegas Golden Knights. These are um, baseball's minor league teams. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I know there's some terrible isotopes. Um, of course, the El Paso Chihuahuas, the Gwinnett Stripers, the Las Vegas Avi Avi Aviators, the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, uh, and who can forget uh, Corporal Klinger's favourite uh, team, the Toledo Mud Hens, and of course... <laughs> What the, what the hell's a mud hen? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. You've got the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp, um, <laughs> the Bowie Bay Sox, uh, the Binghamton Rumble Ponies, the Akron yes. Rubber Ducks, oh, the Rillo Sod Poodles, and uh, another one of my favourite, uh, uh, the Down East Wood Ducks, which are... Uh, the pitching coach is the coach of the Auckland Tuatara, Steve Mintz. So uh, support right? the Down East Wood Ducks. They're one of the affiliates of the Texas Rangers. So uh, All right, I take it all back. Names. I take it all back. Baseball has the worst names, but those are some of the worst names. Oh, right, and this one would be your favourite, I think, Aaron. Go um, on. The Montgomery Biscuits. Oh, I do love a biscuit. I do love a biscuit. <laughs> are they with gravy? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, of course, New Zealand's own Kyle Glagoski who's part of the Philadelphia Phillies uh, organisation. He uh, played last year for the Clearwater Threshers. The Threshers? The Threshers. Nice. Yes. What is a Thresher? Is that a Clearwater? Is it a fish? An angry fish. Maybe a fish. An angry <laughs> fish. <laughs> Who the hell knows? Hey, look, if you've got some uh, really crazy uh, sports teams' names, we'd love to see them in the comments below. We'd love to see them. Okay, so this is our hot new podcast. What are we doing? What we're doing is our brand new format. Ooh, all swishy. And we've got all sorts of technology going uh, like this. See that? That's a clock. I've set that to two minutes. Two minutes. And what we're going to do, we're going to run through a bunch of, uh, of stuff. And when the bell, bell goes, we go on to the next topic. And it's just quick hits. I'll give you two minutes. And our first topic, I won't start the timer until you start talking. And you throw it back to me and we'll go from there. So the first one is on the Rugby Championship. Now, the All Blacks uh, have to leave their families behind for up to 10 weeks, including quarantine periods, to play the Rugby Championships. Set to be played in New South Wales after the All Blacks' first two tests this year uh, against the Wallabies next month. The third Bledisloe Cup test 
will also be played in Queensland ahead of the four-team tournament. Maka, should we should we even bother? Well, that's a big question, really. Uh, you know, do the All Blacks want to be away from home for 10 weeks? I mean, the NRL players have done it uh, for probably longer than that. Um, mm. But the big thing that uh, confu- well, not confuses me, but uh, makes me query whether it is actually going to go ahead with the second wave of COVID striking. Just a couple of weeks ago, six Argentina players tested positive for COVID, even though they seem to be asymptomatic. And also the coach picked it up as well. The other thing is, is it a reality that Argentina can actually field a team, given most of their players have been training in Argentina amongst all this COVID going on over there? Uh, But there are also players based in Europe. So how are they going to bring those players together um, with those that have been training in Argentina? How are they going to play together? Uh, How are they going to be able to to form a a proper team if there's another wave of COVID going through the team? We still don't know. And everything's very quiet out of South Africa. We haven't really heard much of what's going on over there. Is their team still in South Africa or are they spread throughout Europe as well? Now, we know that the rugby championship has been lost to New Zealand. We're just going to get a couple of letters low cup games over here. Uh, And of course, it's going to be hosted in Australia. Melbourne is obviously still in lockdown with another couple Mm. of weeks to go there. Uh, New South Wales, it's still touch and go there, despite many of the NRL games being played in the state. I haven't really heard much news coming out of New South Wales in the last three to four weeks, but they obviously must be starting to get on top. Whether they are or not, we just don't know. And of course, the logistics and expense with possibly forty up to 46 players being chosen in each of those squads, you know, that's going to be an expensive uh, uh, model to to house all those teams. And that's just the players. I mean, since the game has gone professional, there's almost as many support staff now as there are players themselves. So that's going to be huge. And I know last week some um, reporter looking for a big name for himself said that uh, he knew of six All Black players that didn't want to travel, including both Richie Moanga and Bowden Barrett, who, of course, both came out over the weekend and said, what a load of rubbish. So, so I, yeah, it's, it's 50 <laughs> I think, as to whether that rugby championship goes ahead. I know it's not happening till November, December, but we've just got to wait and see, really. So maybe we have to get Peter Belandis involved. He never said it was too hard. He never said it was too hard. He just got it done, mate. They need someone like Peter Belandis in there, maybe. Okay, uh, let's throw go to the EPL, mate. Um, who's had the best transfer window so far in the EPL? Some clubs have had to battle the impacts of the coronavirus pandemic, while others have found the crucial cash uh, to boost their squads. And big money is currently being spent in the 2020 summer transfer window. The market uh, opened the day after the season ended last term, which seems a while ago now, and it's going to run for 10 weeks before shutting on deadline day on Monday, October the 5th. Um, up till now, though, who's had the best transfer? Who's had the best transfer dealings so far out of well, all the English uh, Premier League teams? Yeah, is it the, the best transfer dealings, the most transfer yeah. dealings? The best, the best. Uh, prob- I mean, when you look at the calibre of players that Chelsea has brought in, you'd yep. probably have to say that they've had a pretty good transfer window. It's just going to take them probably a month or six weeks to actually get those players into their squad and... Uh, and running smoothly, as I mentioned before, with somebody like Kai Havertz, who's played yep. in two different positions in two games. Um, be interesting to see how they mould those guys in. They've still got Hakim Ziyech and Thiago Silva to bring yep. in the fold. So, uh, and Ben uh, Chilwell. Who misses, out? who misses out? And Ben Chilwell as well. They've got so many players. And they're going to buy a goalkeeper? And they're going to buy a goalkeeper. Um, so, and obviously, you know, the two of us pay most attention to Liverpool. Liverpool. I think we've had a great transfer window now that we've secured Thiago and also Diogo Jota. Um, and of course, Simicus is a good addition to cover Andy Robertson. What's your thoughts on this, Aaron? Yeah, mate. Um, I mean, it's hard for me to say because I am a Liverpool fan and I'm going to say that Everton have had the best transfer window. Um, James Rodriguez, Hummers, as he likes to be known. Um, great player, flair player. I didn't think he'd work, but he's looking really good. They've also signed Allen and Abdullah Decore from Watford. Both of those guys for just over $20 million. So just for $60 million, they've picked up all three of them and they've revamped their midfield. And that's what they needed. And they've looked really handy. So, I mean, I, 
as much as it pains me to say, I think they've had an absolutely fantastic uh, transfer window. I think, uh, yeah, for me, them and and Chelsea, of course. But like we say, we it's hard to know how good Chelsea are going to be until they all get in. Uh, good to see that um, so far that Manchester City really haven't spent that big. Of course, they spent 41 on uh, Nathan Ake, but no on Ferran Torres, but we haven't really seen him yet. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, mate? Some, some big names in, of course. Uh, Manchester United, of course, with uh, only Danny, uh, Donny van der Beek and, and the uh, Sancho transfer saga rolling on and on and on, not doing them any good. Yeah, I'm going to say Everton. I'm going to say Everton. Everton, that's a that's a mm. big call from a uh, I know. order, I think. It's probably I like... quite a good call. Yes, you're right. Hammers has been playing out of his skin in his first two yep. games. And a lot of the media are saying it's because he's back with Carlo Ancelotti. Um, yep. And that the only time he really played well at Real Madrid was when Ancelotti was in charge. So uh, yeah. maybe that's one of those uh, pairings. You know, David Moyes, Marrow and Fellani. Um, yeah, true. Quite at the same standard. Um, yeah. You know, Players do those... follow uh, follow coaches. We we hear every day on um, on the great Darren Farley when he's doing his Harry Redknapp impersonations, who talks about uh, Nico Cranchar and terrific player, terrific Crouchy player. and Herman Horidison. <laughs> oh, Crouchy, terrific, terrific players, terrific. Players. <laughs> uh, so funny, um, yeah. And I love Abdullah Decore as well. I would have loved uh, Liverpool to buy him. He's a he's a real great uh, buy in midfield. And Allen is a he's a Tough tackling, real sort of nugget there. I think he's really stiffened up the midfield. So, yeah, watch out for Everton, so long as they don't beat Liverpool. Uh, okay. It's always a favourite uh, topic at this stage of the season as to uh, what manager's going to go first. Who? Yeah. Uh, do we do we pick three and say have a sweepstake as to see who goes first? Or are okay, we let's... opening it up to the whole, uh, the whole Premier League as to who might okay. go first? Okay, well, before the season started, I thought might I thought old Roy might be uh, struggling, but he's won two out of two, so I think Roy's okay. For me, the three that are most at risk, uh, um, David Moyes, who's just an absolutely terrible manager. I just don't understand how that man's still in the job. He came into West Ham saying he's a winner. I don't don't, I don't think he's ever won anything, so I don't know. He's very deluded. Uh, for me, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he's, he's treating a fine line there, mate. If he doesn't get some results shortly, he'll be gone. Uh, so long as I don't get Pochettino in, because I love him, and he plays some terrific out... Um, love the style of football he plays, and I'd hate Manchester United to, to pick him up as a manager. So I think he's at risk. And for me, and I know this is a, probably a left-field one, and one that I've been saying for a little while to you, but uh, Frank Lampard's at risk, mate. I, I know you think he's got a little bit of credit in the bank at Chelsea, but I don't think anyone's got credit in the bank. I think if they're mid-table by Christmas, he'll be gone as well. And uh, no excuses for him this year with the amount of money he's spent. So there you go. Those well, are my yeah. three I mean, picks. Abramovich... Abramovich has shown in the past that he's uh, not scared of getting rid of managers. Oh, I mean, trigger. Jose Mourinho won the league. He was gone before the halfway stage of the next season. Um, Antonio Conte won the league. He was gone the following season. Maurizio yep. Sarri, he only lasted one season. Luis Felipe Scolari did well there. He, uh, who won? Someone else. Someone else won the Champions League. What, who, who was the manager when they won the Champions League? He, he was oh, gone. Abraham next Grant. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah he, he won that. Roberto Di Matteo won the Roberto Di Matteo. Europa League and then got sacked. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, he's only lasted half a season there. Um, yep. So, yeah, he's, he's not scared of changing managers. Of course, Mourinho has been back, what, three times? Has he done it twice? Twice, or twice. twice. Yeah. So, yep. uh, you know, and uh, I mean, Mourinho is another one to uh, probably oh, yeah. put that, uh, argument as well. Of Spurs. I mean, Spurs had a win yesterday, a good win. With yeah, they um, Son Hyung Min bagging four goals, um, yeah, yeah. If they was... if they carry on how they did at the end of last season, he might uh, be looking for another job as well. Mourinho as well. Okay, mate. Uh, here we go. Here's another one. The future of the A League. Uh, all clubs in the A League face a huge reduction in revenues thanks to COVID nineteen and no crowds, and a significant reduction in broadcasting rights as well. Uh, it's a massive struggle now to most clubs to hold on to their best players. Is the A League a dead duck? Well, yeah, many people are talking about it, aren't they? Um, some are saying it's time for Australia to just go back to grassroots uh, competitions and having their local Victoria, New South Wales, West Australia competitions and no National League at all. Um, but as you say, many clubs, including the Phoenix, are being forced to lay off players or end contracts due to that decreasing revenue. 
And the interesting fact going forward is that the next season of the A-League is supposed to start in December and go through mm. to July before moving to a full Winter League in 2022. Um, the obvious thing there is the Winter League is going to go up against the NRL and AFL uh, mm. as winter sports, but it does avoid a clash with the 2022 World Cup, which is being held in Qatar. And that's been scheduled for November and December. Uh, to avoid the searing heat of the Middle East in June and July. And also for this uh, coming season, there's supposed to be an increase to 12 teams with a new Sydney franchise due. So, yeah, it's really up in the air. I don't think any of the clubs really know what the future is for the A-League. No. It's, um, it's sad, mate. It's a sad situation. Of course, I don't know whether our uh, listeners have heard that Stephen Taylor is now leaving the Phoenix as well, our captain and... Uh, probably the big, you know, one of the biggest icons to ever play for the club. And um, it's just so hard to support a team when the players are just, the turnover of players every year is just like a, almost 100%. I mean, the reason you like a club is because of the players they've got. But when you don't know next year whether they're going to have the same players, it's just so hard to support a league like that, you know? A team like that, a league like that. And I, yeah, I'd just rather it get back to where, I don't know, I don't know whether... I mean, COVID has just stuffed everything up so badly. It's it's just so hard to see a future for, for the A-League. I mean, whether we put it in cotton wool for a little while, I don't know. But um, we can do worse than going back to grassroots, can't we? I mean, you know, during these times, even in New Zealand. Absolutely. You know? What's next on the list? Oh, you're going to love this next one, mate. Macca loves the Yankees. Here we go. I want to I want to drill down into, into that into that head of yours, which looks so massive on the screen in front of me. Absolutely. But I wonder what, I wonder what's, <laughs> I do wonder what's inside it sometimes when you support a team like the Yankees. <laughs> uh, we've, we've all heard of bandwagon jumpers. We, do, we just love jumping on the best team with the best players. And I never thought my co-host was one, but there was one team I constantly take him to task for supporting. It's the team with the biggest payroll in baseball, the Yankees. It's not like he supports the Knicks or the Giants. So Mecca, why do you ride the evil Yankees bandwagon? Well, it's the for exactly no. the same reason uh, <laughs> that I support Liverpool Football Club. When I first started watching football back in 1974, Liverpool won the FA Cup, and I thought that sounds like a good that seems like a good team to support. In 1996, I sat down in front of my TV to watch the World Series, and it was the Atlanta Braves against the New York Yankees. The Braves won the first two games. And in New York, and I thought, oh, this could be an interesting series. Sort of knowing a bit about the history of the Yankees, you know, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, uh, um, et cetera. And then the Yankees proceeded to win the next four games in a row. And I thought, okay, this is my team. I'm going to follow the <laughs> New York Yankees. And, of course, up till then, they'd actually had a horror run. Uh, they'd qualified for the playoffs in 95 for the first time in something like 15 years. Um, and it was the only time that their star first baseman, Don Mattingly, ever got to play in the, uh, in the playoffs, uh, having played in horrific Yankee sides throughout the 80s and uh, early part of the 90s. So that is the reason I started following the New so, York. So, so what you're saying, let me get this straight, what you're saying is they won four in a row, so you're not a bandwagon jun jumper, you just jumped on them when they, and before that they were crap and you weren't supporting them, and then they won four in a row and then you jumped on them. Well, Sounds like to me. Really watching baseball. <laughs> Come on, man. And, and that's not the reason I love Liverpool. The reason I love Liverpool is because we lost the FA Cup final to Man oh, United, mate. I jumped on them because of another reason. I oh, look, mate. I still, I'm still gonna always hassle you about. Oh, I know you will. And it's ironic. Oh, ironic yes. that I'm actually wearing a Cubs shirt today. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it says everything. It says everything. But ba <laughs> baseball's one of those sports because they have an American League and a National League. I sort of, I have teams That's in true. the American League that I like and I have yeah. teams in the National League that I like. Um, yeah. And of course, the Arizona Diamondbacks is one of those because I got to spend a month there in 2018. Yep. So, Fair enough. I'm a, and I'm a Mariners and a, and a Red Sox fan. So, I mean, there you go. You can support more than two. <laughs> uh, should, we do, should we do another couple? This is fun. Should we do another couple? Okay, mate. Uh, LeBron James, he's been uh, vocal in his uh, outbursts about not becoming the MVP of the NBA. What are your thoughts on that? Well, apparently, uh, Mr. James, as you say, was not very happy at all. Uh, no. He only got 16 of 101 first-place votes, 
uh, in the voting, which was won by the Milwaukee Bucks, Giannis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> I'm you nearly gonna, said it right. I'm you nearly not got it right. And say that again. Let's uh, call him the Greek freak, don't they? The, the Greek, Greek freak. freak. Yeah. And this is the fourth year in a row that James has missed out, and uh, he is pissed off with the selection panel. So, uh, and as you said before, since that uh, voting came out, he's been absolutely on fire. Um, absolutely. But I, you know, it, it harks back to 2010 when the All Whites won the Supreme Helberg Award, and Mahi Drysdale spat the dummy big time. Mm. You know, going on about, oh, the fact they never actually won anything, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it was like, shut up, Mahi. The, yeah. You compete in rowing where there's probably, and you've probably only got two or, three, or 30 countries. Yeah, two I or mean, three rivals that can yeah. compete with you. In yeah. the World Cup, you've got, I know we've spoken about this before, you yeah. know, you're playing against the best sides in the world. Any one of eight teams can win that World Cup once it gets to the finals. Yep. New Zealand to go through unbeaten and draw with the likes of Italy and Paraguay, as well as Slovakia, that was just an unbelievable feat. Um, you know, it's a bit like when the Tall Blacks finished fourth at the World Championships um, back in the early 2000s. Oh, absolutely. Yep. I'll, I'll just ask you one question about the LeBron James thing, though. Uh, if you were starting a professional franchise basketball team and you could have any player in the world, who would be the first player you'd pick? Past LeBron LeBron. James. Well, no, now. P now. Players that are playing right now. The well, first player you pick, LeBron James and Absolutely. Daylight second. So, to me, he's got every right to be a bit pissy about it because uh, regardless of what he's won, he's still the best player as far as I'm concerned. So, I mean, and I'm not even a LeBron James fan. You, you just, you don't have to be. You see it, you see him play. He's just, he's just immense. It's like Anthony Davis, the guy he plays with, I think he's got potential to be better than LeBron James. Mm. But LeBron James just has... I mean, Anthony Davis is just such a nice guy. He's, he, LeBron James has just got something up here, you know? It's just that, that thing that champions have, that real competitive thing, what just takes them a little bit further, you know? And, I, yeah, I just think he's the best player in, in basketball at the moment. So, yeah, I'd be pissed if I hadn't won it for four years as well. So, good on him. Okay, mate. Uh... Shall we go? I'll go. I'll go into what we'll do. One more. We'll do one more. Uh, the Olympic Games and the Commonwealth Games. I mean, the Olympic Games are supposed to be obviously it was supposed to be this year. Would have all been uh, would have all been done and dusted by now if uh, COVID hadn't hit. It's supposed to be next year. No idea when this COVID thing's going to end. Uh, we're watching the second wave in Europe and America and all over the place, and it looks like it could drag on forever. What is the future of these? places where you know these games where the whole world gets together surely that can't be good and surely the future of the olympics has to be up in the air oh absolutely and the same goes goes for the commonwealth games too um i think the commonwealth games has lost its uh luster if, if that can be a word uh and i think so is the olympic games it, it's always been one of the sport sporting events that i've loved every four years but the last yeah. couple of games, I've sort of lost a bit of interest in it. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older or whether there's just not the superstars around the world that uh, there used to be. You know, there was no Usain Bolt at the last games. Um, and those type of superstars, you know, you, you always look forward to uh, to seeing, you know, Michael Jordan playing the basketball or yeah. um, Lionel Messi playing the football when he was younger and, and Usain Bolt hurtling down the track. Um, those sorts of names just, you know, flowed off the tongue. But uh, now, I guess, with everything going professional, um, it's just not what it used to be. And uh, I can see sometime in the future that uh, maybe the Olympic Games and probably even before then, the Commonwealth Games, maybe just be pushed aside. And uh, Yeah. I, I think what they need to do with the Olympics is just take it back to basics and just make it athletics again. Forget about all the other sports and just make it athletics. I mean, oh, that's you saying uh, uh, every four years, I, I still look forward to the Olympics. I, I love, I love becoming an expert in sports. I only watch once every four, four years, you know, uh, and seeing those sports, but, but the athletics, I don't really watch athletics any other time other than the Commonwealth games. Mm. I mean, or, or no, the, the Olympic games. I mean, uh, obviously, it's on it's on TV a little bit. They have the uh, World Championships, etc., and uh, the Golden League. Don't really watch any of that. I just wait for the Olympics, and when it's on, it's just a celebration of of the you know of 
the, the greatness of sport. And, um, you know, I just think they need to shrink it down. Just make it smaller. And also that would make it available to more countries to host. So yeah. get, rid of, get rid of golf, get rid of rugby sevens, get rid of football, get rid of tennis. Get rid of all those sports. I've got, I've got their own thing, you know. Make it just about athletics and I'll be happy. There you go. I don't think the Olympics is over. I just think they need to remix it. But they probably won't because of the money, you know. Yeah, so, probably not. I mean, there's yeah. huge sponsorship money, money around and involved. And, I mean, with the prevalence of sports now having their, their own world championships, if not every year, every second year. And mm. uh, so it's not really the pinnacle event that it used to be. Um, exactly. yeah, it's magnificent and you get it's great honor to win an Olympic gold silver or bronze medal um, but I think the athletes of now um, put more importance on their own world championships so uh, absolutely yeah be interesting to see what happens in that uh, in that area okay mate well that was a good bit of fun eh? bit of fun two it minute was. quick hits um, so now just to finish with mate I want to know what you're watching over over the next uh, week until we get back together what are you going to be watching yeah, it'll be pretty much the same as what we what I watched last week. <laughs> That's okay. A bit of football, uh, yep. a bit of rugby, a bit of um, uh, baseball. Uh, no supercars this weekend, so uh, I won't be watching that. Um, so that that'll be pretty much my viewing over the weekend. You never know what pops up out of the woodwork. Um, yeah, something. something that uh, I haven't quite uh, hooked on to yet that I know that I didn't know was coming up. So you never know. Okay, well, Israel Adesanya is fighting on uh, Sunday. I know you're a uh, big fight sport guy. Uh, I'll definitely be uh, definitely be watching that. That'll be fantastic, watching guys punch each other in the face in a cage. I know you're all over that, aren't you, Mackie? You love that sort of no. thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe, maybe, you, maybe, maybe you can throw to me for two minutes next week on that one. Uh, of course, I'll be watching the Warriors. The Warriors have one more match against Manly to go. They sit 12th on, 14 points, unable to make the eight. But I'll be watching uh, my boys one last time for 2020 uh, and uh, cheering them on uh, to win the before we win the comp next year. Some big signings as well. Uh, Murdoch Masilla's coming and uh, Adam Fanua Blake from Manly looks like he might be coming. 120 uh, kgs of pure Samoan muscle. That man could be awesome. So our forward pack's looking fantastic for next week. So I'm, for next year. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the Warriors go. Uh, game two, Stanley Cup playoffs. Stars versus Lightning. That's midday today. Uh, that's about half an hour. I'll be uh, perched in front of the TV for that one. Uh, NBA finals. Looking forward to seeing the Celtics Lakers throwback final. Hopefully that happens. Uh, and hopefully LeBron doesn't go home disappointed. And of course, the NFL is back. I'll try and catch some of that and see if Tom Brady, uh, that Tom Brady, Bill, Bill Belichick thing. And um, I was just wondering whether Macca would mention the Ramfilly Shield. He did. So good quits to you for that. And of course, there's a top of the table EPL clash, uh, Liverpool versus Arsenal. Uh, yes. That's coming up next Tuesday. That's a big, big game. Top of the table, Arsenal looking a lot better under Mikel Arteta. And uh, it's, it's a big game at Enfield uh, on this coming Tuesday. That's the sports I'll be watching. And like you say, mate, I'll be perched on the thing, channel surfing. So I'll probably watch something else as well. And we'll cover that uh, next week. Remember, make a comment, drop us a like below and make sure you subscribe to the Hot Air Sports Podcast on YouTube. And I think we've got a Facebook page and, and other social media coming very shortly as well. Absolutely. Well, yes, an interesting uh, chat today, uh, Mahona. I look forward to next week and uh, you never if know. If you don't go on holiday again, if you don't go on holiday, you're we not we heading away. <laughs> <laughs> Love your work, mate. Love your work. Beautiful. Quite right. It's good, and, uh, good night from me. And it's good and tag from me. Good night right. from him. <laughs>